Well, welcome back to my video series investigating the ARM Cortex M33 core. This is Mark from Embedded Pro and this week, the 13th of the series, I'm continuing my investigation into the DSP acceleration feature on the NXP LPC 55S69. The DSP accelerator is called the Power Quad and last week I introduced the Power Quad it's on the coprocessor bus of the ARM Cortex-M33 core and features four floating point compute units that can perform a floating point MAC function. There are four of them, hence the power quad. Last week we looked at the coprocessor interface and saw how we can do simple unary or binary maths functions. This week I'm going to continue the study and look at some more complex arithmetic. In particular, we're going to look at the matrix acceleration engine. As a reminder, these more complex mathematical operations include performing the fast Fourier transform and the in inverse fast Fourier transform, a range of matrix operations, and also some cordic functions. These are the various interfaces on the power quad. We saw last week the coprocessor interface. This week we're going to be using the AHB bus interface, and the power quad is going to operate as an AHB slave just like any other peripheral. And then the power quad is able to access memory as a AHB bus master. The peripheral registers for the power quad are really easy to understand because they're very orthogonal. Many of these advanced arithmetic functions that we want to calculate have two input parameters, for example, two matrices. And so we need to pass to the power quad the pointers to the input data structures. This is input A base and input B base in the peripheral registers. We also need to specify the formats, our Q15, Q31, or floating. And we need to specify the pointer for where we want the output to be placed. This is the out base register at the top of the table. Lastly, the power quad needs some internal memory to be able to store intermediate results. And so it needs a pointer for the temporary region, that's temp base. So we have four pointers, out base, temp base, in A base and in B base and their corresponding formats. Moving on, there's some important control registers. There's a main control register which is used to determine which particular engine we want to use. This is a field called the decode machine. In the control register there's another field called the decode opcode and this selects which function we want the engine to perform. We might want to select the inverse or the multiplication or the dot product function. The control register also has a bit named engine busy. We can pull this bit to determine if the power quad has finished or is still working on the function. Many of these advanced arithmetic functions have a number of inputs. For example, the fast Fourier transform may operate on 128 inputs or 256. In the case of matrix operations, we need to tell the matrix engine the dimensions of the matrices. We pass this in the length register. Moving on, there's a set of registers for the cordic engine and then some status registers. These are the error status register, an interrupt enable register, uh, the event trigger enable register, and then there's the interrupt status register. Note that the error status and the interrupt status are sticky bits and we need to write one to clear those bits. Lastly, there's a set of computing registers. The general purpose register bank and the compute register bank. There are 16 general purpose register banks and eight compute register banks. And the, these are used in particular in the fast Fourier transform engine. But they're also used by the Biquad engine in the coprocessor interface that we saw last week. Well, I wanted to look at a real world example where we can use the power quad. And this is the lamp that's hanging over my desk in my office. It hangs from the ceiling, but it's not quite in the right place. So I have another cord that brings it closer to the wall. The light fitting weighs 123 grams or 0 0.123 kilograms. Well, I wanted to understand what forces are in the cables that are holding the light in place. Of course, the light is not moving, so all the forces are balanced. Or we could say that the sum of the forces F1, F2 and F0 in vector notation are zero. 
I looked at the angles of the cords and the one hanging from the ceiling is at 75 degrees to the horizontal. And the cable that's pulling it to the wall is at 30 degrees to horizontal. Well, of course, we can write a mathematical equation which describes these forces. We can write the two simultaneous equations in matrix notation. So we have one matrix, which is the angles, another matrix, which are the forces that we want to determine. And these are equal to the forces that we know in the system. I'm going to name the matrices angles, forces and inputs. And if we multiply through by the inverse of the angles matrix, and so our resulting matrix equation is the forces that we want to determine is equal to the inverse of the angles matrix times by the inputs. We can use the power quad and the matrix engine to solve this equation. First, let's do it in Excel. So the angles matrix, I've just converted the angles into radians. I've used the M inverse function in Excel to calculate the inverse of the angles matrix. The input matrix is zero because there's no force acting in the X direction. F zero acting downwards is the weight of the light fitting, 0 0.123 kilograms times by the force of gravity. It's just over 1.2 newtons. Excel calculates the result. So F1 is just over one newton and F2 is 0 0.32 newtons. So it's not carrying much force at all. So let's now move into MCU Expresso IDE and we can write these equations and pass them into the power quad. And we're going to find out how many clock cycles it takes for the power quad to resolve this mathematics. Here I am in MCU Expresso IDE's version 11. And I've created a new example project using the new project wizard to use the SDK. And I've called the project Power Quad 1. When I created the project, I selected to use a driver and the driver name is Power Quad. So by ticking this box when I created the project, we added the Power Quad driver to my example. We can see that here in the drivers folder. And the new project wizard has added all of these Power Quad drivers to my project. Expanding now the source group, LPC 55S69 Power Quad 1.c is the main source module for the project. We can see that I've added the FSL PowerQuad.h driver to my source module with this hash include. The project is based on the SDK and of course we have the normal board initialization. I've changed the printf to print PowerQuad demo. And here is my example project. I have some hash defines. I've specified um, the value of pi. And here are my inputs to the matrix engine. Here's the angles matrix. It's two by two, so it has four float components. The inputs matrix is the initial case that has two components. The remaining inputs are the mass of the light fitting and a constant for gravity. There's some intermediate products that we need to calculate. Here's the inverse matrix. So inverse will be the inverse matrix for the angles matrix. We'll calculate that with the power quad. The power quad needs some RAM for the intermediate results. And so we're allocating 1024 words of space in memory. When we perform the matrix multiplication, we're going to multiply a two by two matrix by a two by one matrix. And when we perform the inverse, we're going to generate a two by two matrix from a two by two matrix. So we have these two length parameters. We'll see those in a moment. The output matrix is called forces and it's dimension two. It's one column by two rows. So let's set up the initial conditions. We'll initialize the power quad and then initialize the input matrix. The force in the X direction was zero and the force in the Y direction is minus the mass times gravity. Next, we'll set up the angles matrix. 
And note that we're using the PowerQuad coprocessor interface to calculate the cosine and sine values. If you remember, the lamp was suspended at 75 degrees. So here we have 75 degrees converted into radians. Then we'll take the cosine and the sine of that radian value. The other angle was 30 degrees. Here we convert it into radians and use the coprocessor interface to calculate the cosine and the sine. If you remember, force 2 acts in the minus x direction, and so we must multiply the first element in the angles matrix by minus 1. That's all of our initial conditions set up. And next we configure the power quad. We want to use the power quad engine matrix, and all of our data types are in floating. So this is calling the SDK function power quad set format. We're now ready to perform the matrix inversion. Let me make some space. Here's a function call for the power quad SDK driver. Power quad matrix inversion. We're using the power quad. We pass in the dimensions of the matrices in the length i variable. Then we pass in a pointer to the angles matrix a pointer to the temporary space, and a pointer to the result matrix, which is named inverse. We can look at the implementation for that function. So if we just go to the declaration, if we look at the function declaration, we can see how simple it is to use the power quad. All we're doing is setting up the base registers in the power quad in a base, temp base, and out base with the pointers to the variables that we want to use. We pass in the length variable, and this is the dimensions of the matrices that we're using. And lastly, we write the decode opcode matrix inverse into the control register, which will start the matrix operation. Back in main, we just pull the engine busy bit in the control register, waiting for the matrix inversion to be done. We move on when it is, to perform the matrix multiplication. Another very simple function call. We pass in the length. This time it's a 2 by 2 by 1 multiplication. Here's a pointer to the inverse that we calculated earlier on. Here's our input matrix and the output matrix is the matrix forces. So we pass in a pointer to inputs and a pointer to forces. The function called power quad matrix multiplication, again, is very simple. It's setting up the out base in A base, this time in B base, length and the control register, this time with the opcode matrix multiplication. Writing to the control register sets the matrix engine running. And so here at line 109, we pull the engine busy bit, waiting for the matrix multiplication to complete. Let's compile the code and download it to the debugger. So here we are in our debug session. I have some breakpoints set, so I'm going to run down to where we begin the matrix inverse. If we browse the angles matrix, we can see that the four elements are as we calculated in Excel earlier on. So the angles matrix is now ready. First, we need to perform the matrix inversion. So I'm just going to run over here and stop before we make the multiplication. Okay. We now have the inverse matrix. Here it is just off the screen, but we can see that it looks the same as we calculated in Excel. Let's step over the matrix multiplication function call and the resulting output matrix will be in forces. So the multiplication is done. Let's just browse the forces matrix and we see 1.08 and 0.32 Newtons as we calculated in Excel. So the question is, how long does this all take in the power quad? 
Let me just move the program counter back to the beginning of the application. Move to line. This time I'm going to run my code to where we do the matrix inversion. Let me set a breakpoint there, remove that one, and let's run. And we can measure the number of clock cycles with the data watch point timer. Let me just open that up in the registers view. Here we are, the data watch point timer. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to step over this matrix inversion function and we'll be able to see the delta cycles that that's taken. Let me step over. We can see that the matrix inversion function has taken 80 cycles. Well, that's 173 clock cycles. What about the matrix multiplication? Let me step over. We're now ready to call the matrix multiplication function. Let me step over that. Let's take an A5 clock cycles. That's 165 decimal clock cycles. Well, how much faster is that compared to doing the operation in standard C? It's quite hard to say because there's no standard ANSI C matrix inverse and matrix multiply functions. There are a number of libraries that are available and the results differ. However, NXP provides some information in the reference manual for the LPC 55S69. Here it is in chapter 49, and we can see that for a matrix multiply with a floating data type, it's quoted as 15 times faster performed on the power quad compared to using the Cortex-M33 core. For the matrix inverse, again with a float32 data type, it's approximately four times faster running on the power quad compared to using the Cortex-M33 core. My test showed that with a much smaller matrix, 2x2 two two and 2x1 two that we were using today, the improved performance was not so significant. Well, if you're enjoying these videos, then you can always subscribe to my channel. You can like the videos and you can share it with your friends. I'll see you next week and we're going to look at the fast Fourier transform. Goodbye.